Our activity must be geared to the winning of power. That still has to be said to some people in our movement here in America, back in Britain and everywhere else. They are crusaders for the truth, but they don't relate it to the necessities of winning power. It cannot be said enough. Power is what must be won. First, just a little bit of power. Then more power. And finally, complete power. Activity geared to anything else is a waste of time. Hello. Yes, power is what must be done. That's right. Those immortal words from the late, great John Tyndall are more relevant now than ever. But I'll get back to that in a minute. I make this video in response to some emails I receive regarding it's too late, it's over, there's too much against us, your past will hold you back, Joe, and other such negative thoughts and whatever. And to an extent, they're right. But this is what you've got to remember, which you're not. And this uh, video is not aimed at one uh, or any individual. It's, it, I'm just answering all those that send me messages uh, regarding it's too late and all the usual stuff. I'm not preparing for tomorrow. I am preparing for the future. I am preparing now for the council election in May 2019, Kensington and Fairfield here in Liverpool. Then I'll be campaigning for the one after that and the one after that and the one after that. I am campaigning for the future and I am laying the groundwork now. Is power within our grasp now? Well, of course it's not. Right, so if you're looking at things as they are now, well, you're quite right. But I am not planning, preparing and laying the groundwork for now, but the future. Let me put a few uh, things to you. Look what's happening in London now as an example. It's a third world hellhole. It's a third world crime riddled hellhole. I could use stronger language, but that will do. And anyone with half a brain, with their eyes open, can see so. They can see what's happening in London. Now, it is due to not enough bobbies on the beat, but the main reason, the main reason is the ethnic makeup of London. Of course it is. You see, when uh, immigrants from the Commonwealth came to Britain in the 40s, the 50s, on the Windrush, they were God-fearing, law-abiding Christian people that loved Britain, loved the Queen. They came from places that were law-abiding in the Commonwealth. What's coming here now is totally different. They're coming from hell and they're bringing hell with them, right? Now, some of the Windrush immigrants, some of their offspring, you know, they were involved in crime and riots and muggings. Not all of them, some of them were. But when I look back now, I can understand why a lot of them were. Back then in Britain... In the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, people were not used to large numbers of immigrants from different countries. So there was racism, and I'm sure they were discriminated against. But more so, I believe, what happened to them is watching programmes like Love Thy Neighbour. Remember Eddie Booth, Jack Smethurst, and Alf Garney. Remember that? Uh, Till Death Us Depart. They would have watched that where blacks were being attacked in the most vicious way you could imagine real bad derogatory names really insulting some some of those involved in crime when they were out on a mugging spree they didn't just mug elderly white people they built beat them within an inch of their lives you know and that's probably been incited by those reckless and irresponsible liberal tv writers that were writing them storylines to demonize those that had an anti- uh, immigrant stance or supported the National Front by uh, portraying them as ignorant racists and whatever. But in the meantime, it must have been inciting young blacks, mustn't it? Christ, with, without a doubt. Because those that were around in the 70s, remember the National Front news, that was full of elderly white women and men who'd been beaten senseless for five pounds or something. And I'll guarantee you, those that were on their mugging spree, when they came across elderly white people, they were remembering them program. I'm sure they were, definitely. But that's another video in itself. So the Windrush lot were good, God-fearing, law-abiding people. I went to church, loved Britain, loved the Queen. Some of their offspring, as I've said, um, you know, they weren't so nice to Britain and its uh, 
and its people. Now a lot were, but those coming here now are totally different than the Windrush and their offspring. This lot's coming from hell and it's bringing hell with it. So London, another uh, diverse ethnic towns and cities, they're coming apart. Now let's get on to the NHS. Let's take the NHS. The NHS is crumbling because it can't, it can't keep up with the amount of sick people because take mass immigration out the equation. I know that's not helping. Take that out the equation. But a large section of the British people are sabotaging their own health, right? And no matter how many hospitals you build, how many doctors, nurses and staff you train up, how many million, billions you pump into the NHS, you can't fix an ever-increasing sicker population. You're not going to be able to keep up with it. The diabetes time bomb alone, you reckon, is going to bankrupt the NHS. And that's not an attack on anyone with diabetes. I've got good friends with diabetes. But the point I'm making is the NHS is crumbling. The housing situation now is getting more dire. Where There's no houses now because you're trying to compete with the hundreds of thousands or cater, should I say, you're trying to cater for the hundreds of thousands coming in each year as to where they're going to live. So they're digging the, the green belt up now. Then there's social care, the London Underground, the, the, the trains there are, are under immense strain because there's too many people now wanting to get on, on a train because of mass immigration. And there's many, many other things that are happening to this country that are bringing it to its knees. So Joe Owens is planning for the future, right? I'm not planning for next week. Is power within our grasp now? Well, of course it's not, right? But I'm not saying it is. We've got to prepare for the future for when our people really do need us, because they will. Don't be giving me all this defeatist nonsense. You see, I'm a survivor, me. I didn't work on the doors for 27 years and survived it for nothing. I survived it because I'm a tough cookie and I'm a survivor. I didn't hide behind other doormen when there was a fight or went to the toilet when I saw trouble. I got stuck in there and I survived. Now, I'm applying my survival skills now to politics as well. There's nothing that phases me. No attacks by the media or whatever, or whatever, anything like that. I'm a tough cookie. And that's what you've got to do now. You've got to just get in there and let's do this. Stop moaning and complaining. Well, the alternative is to post news items on uh, Nick Griffin's Facebook or have a march with the Football Lads Alliance. Christ, you know, uh, that just sets us back because it'll be accompanied, you know, with violence from another equally sad lot, the, the so-called anti-racist lot, you know. So what's the alternative? Well, exactly, there isn't. We have to just get in there, right, and be ready for when our people really do need us. So stop bleeding, moaning and complaining. Okay, thanks.